Let's face it, Apple is the king of trackpads. In general, when it comes to using a laptop, Mac users have always had a bit of an edge in terms of their input device thanks to the amazing touchpads they provide. Everything from the surface materials they use to the software itself is heavily controlled to give you that perfect feel of precision. Today, of course, Windows has precision touchpad drivers that make the experience significantly better, but even then, they're far away from that buttery smoothness of a Mac. Most Windows users will probably still have quite the reaction to seeing an external trackpad, like the magic trackpad here, and rightfully so. Generally speaking, a touchpad experience should be significantly worse than using a mouse. But this is quite the different story. Roll the intro. So let's answer the biggest question here and just get it out of the way. Apple calls their peripherals magic. So after using this for about a month, have I suddenly gotten magic powers? Is this experience really that good that it warrants such a pretentious naming scheme? The answer, of course, is no. Not in the slightest. It did help me smash that like button and subscribe button though. Go figure. Jokes aside, Apple's products are really great. But magic? Really? Not at all. It's especially laughable when the magic keyboard still hasn't gotten the magic of backlighting somehow in 2022. So then, how does the Magic Trackpad compare to, let's say, a mouse, when the Magic Keyboard is so far behind the other competitors? Well, simply said, there's nothing like it out there, and I can say that this device is absolutely awesome. Let's start with the part that's perhaps somewhat magic here, the setup process. Connecting the Magic Trackpad is absolutely the simplest thing you could ask for. It rivals the setup process of AirPods, which I would say are arguably more magic than this product. You simply pull out the system preferences, go to trackpad settings, and from there, there's a button that just says, set up Bluetooth trackpad, and that's it. Your trackpad will be automatically detected and you're good to go. However, things become a little bit more strange when it comes to connecting to other devices because you may have noticed there are no buttons or switches outside of the single power switch. While I commend Apple for not including those stupid blinking lights, not having a pairing button leads to some really strange issues. The big problem is that when you turn off and on the device, it goes directly into pairing mode rather than connecting to the last device. So in order to connect back, you can just click on the device from Bluetooth settings. Or so I thought. For whatever reason, I cannot connect back to this trackpad unless I delete the trackpad completely and add it back. Now, this isn't that big of a problem for a laptop, but I imagine this would be rather annoying for a desktop computer where the trackpad might be your only method of input. But I don't think this will be as big of an issue as you may think. With the introduction of universal control, having to switch around your peripherals is kind of a thing of the past. However, there are still times when you may want to connect to a, another device. Connecting to another Apple device is very, very simple. Simply switch the trackpad off and then turn it back on and it'll appear on the Bluetooth menu. After that, the rest is fairly obvious. You just use it. Using a Windows computer, however, is a completely different story. The trackpad is very obviously not made for Windows and it shows. In order to get it to work, you need to download some drivers from Apple's bootcamp software. Obviously, this is not the most elegant solution and it's something a very small subset of people will want to do. People seem to have mediocre experiences with this. Good to know, I guess, that it's possible, but obviously don't buy this just for Windows. For most people, the biggest thing you may be thinking about is that the battery life will be affected since you can't turn it off. Well, I'm happy to say that the battery life is incredible as expected from Apple's Magic products. The trackpad gets about two months of battery life, unless you're a heavy user like myself, in which case you'll get closer to about a month or a bit more. The important thing here is that you don't turn off the trackpad in order to achieve those numbers. In fact, Apple even recommends not turning off the device when charging in order to get the fastest speeds. Speaking of charging speeds, this thing is fast. In about a minute or two, you'll get enough battery to last the rest of your day. The downside to charging is that a full charge will take about four to five hours based on my testing. It's best to leave the charging to the night. 
But while charging isn't a big problem, the fact that it still ships with lightning instead of USB-C is absolutely ridiculous and it really caused some annoying cable issues at my desk. In the future, I'd really like to see them switch to something that is a little bit more universal. The main reason you'd want a trackpad over say something like a MX Master Mouse or even a Magic Mouse is those wonderfully sweet gestures. The scrolling is super smooth and it's quite precise in my opinion. You can of course pinch to zoom and it feels just as natural as doing it on a phone. The overall experience is exactly how you'd expect a touch sensitive slab to be. Mac OS is very clearly made to be used with a touchpad versus a mouse and it shows in the numerous gestures that the operating system comes with. To see all of your windows in one place, simply swipe up with three fingers. Want to see all your windows for your current program? Swipe down with three fingers. You can also swipe between your spaces and full screen applications with a three finger swipe in the left or right directions. In a word, it's awesome. Some people thought that Apple was ridiculous for making the MacBook trackpads as big as they are, but bigger trackpads really help. The added real estate on the Magic trackpad, which is really quite big, means that you have even more space to do whatever you want to do. What's really cool is that the trackpad even supports force touch, which essentially separates your taps into one of two categories, a regular tap and a hard tap. This allows you to get a brand new dimension of control on your computer, which really does feel natural after a while. To people who ask why Apple won't make a touchscreen Mac, here's your answer. The trackpad on Apple devices simply feel like an extension of your hand. Simply said, this device is amazing. It certainly isn't as magical as Apple may lead you to believe. It won't magically make you hit that subscribe button. But what it will do is complement your Apple devices perfectly and give you that Apple experience with both software and hardware that everyone talks about. This has, without a doubt, replaced my need for a mouse while also offering me an ironically more ergonomic experience than what I got with the MX Master Mouse. Now this is certainly a very well-made product that I can 100% recommend just like our sponsor, me. I made an app called Moodcast for recording your moods on iOS. It's available for free on the App Store and comes with a variety of wonderful themes for you to use. Go give it a try today. I think that the current price of the product is quite steep, but it's justified given how well made it feels. You can snag one for around $120, and once you have it, it's not like you're going to be replacing it anytime soon. It's a product that you can just forget about, and I think that's a good thing. Anyway, thanks for watching, and make sure you hit that subscribe button, and how about giving that like button some love too? Anyway, I'll see you all later.